good morning students today we are going to learn about the structure and function of ear you know ear it is both an auditory sense organ and a balancing organ okay you know that ear helps us to hear so it is an auditory sense organ but it also has a role in balancing our body so it is also a balancing organ okay now we can see the structure ear has three main parts as you see in the picture here there is an external ear then there is a middle part called the middle ear and an internal part or inner part that is called the internal ear or the inner ear the inner ear is also called labyrinth okay so there are three parts what are the three parts of the ear the external ear middle ear and the inner ear okay now we can see the external ear as you see in the picture you can see here there is an outer region which is called the pinna and there is a tube tubular part that is called the ear canal or the auditory canal it is also called external auditory meters and there is a membrane called diaphragm or tympanum or eardrum okay so what are the three parts the ear lobe or pinna which carries sound waves to the auditory canal you know sound is produced when an object vibrates okay and that vibration causes the vibration of the air and that vibration of the air it is received by the ear lobe or pinna and it takes that to the auditory canal here to the auditory canal so the pinna takes it it collects it and okay send it through the auditory canal and the auditory canal or the ear canal it is called also called external auditory meters it carries the sound goes to the tympanum or the eardrum it carries the sound waves to the tympanum and this is the tympanum it's a very thin membrane okay that separates the external ear from the middle ear this tympanum eardrum and the ear canal has small hair and wax that helps to trap dust and small particles the ear canal here this portion has very minute hairs and wax which is produced by the wax glands here and this helps to trap dust particles and other foreign particles or microorganisms or if any small very minute insects enter into the ear that all get trapped in the wax okay so protective in function okay then the tympanum the thin membrane that separates external ear from the middle ear as you see here this is a tympanum this is a pinna or the ear lobe that collects the sound and it is passed through the auditory canal or the ear canal and it reaches the eardrum or the tympanum so these are the parts of the external ear now comes the middle ear you know in the middle ear there are ear ossicles and these ear ossicles are three tiny bones in our body okay three tiny bones and these are the tiny bones one this is called the malleus and this is called incus and this is called stapes okay this is stapes uh, you know the shape okay and malleus incus stapes three tiny bones very tiny can you imagine what would be the size of these three bones and this tape is it is the smallest bone in our body nammala sarirathile etton cheriya asthiyana tape is can you imagine uh, how would they look or how how about their size can you imagine their size now you can see here see it's at just a uh, 25 uh, paise uh, coin okay it's actually it is um, a, a quarter of the united states a coin called quarter 25 cents and 
it is just the size of a 50 paise coin uh, here okay and here you can see on this on the top of that uh, these three bones are kept and you can imagine compare the size and these three bones are kept in uh, in the finger okay and you see here how small these bones are okay so these are the three tiny bones called malleus incus and stapes then comes there is a tube from the middle ear a tube that connects the middle ear with the pharynx you know pharynx pharynx is the origin the common passage for the air and food okay it is just behind the mouth cavity uh, there is a common passage for the air and food and it is called pharynx and this is taken eustachian tube that connects the middle ear with the pharynx and you know wh what is that for it is to maintain the pressure on both side of the eardrum it maintains the pressure on both sides of the eardrum. You will see how it, it how it happens, or how does it do that? See here, this is the tympanum or the eardrum, and on the on this side, this tympanum, this side surface communicates with air from here. Okay, and this side, it communicates through the air in the mouth, through the mouth, in the pharynx, and then mouth okay so we often open the mouth and talk and all so the pressure on both sides will be balanced okay otherwise if if any one region one side it is closed what happens any change in the air pressure on the other side may damage the eardrum okay about if you're watching a fireworks okay uh, and uh, if you are keeping your mouth closed so there is chance that the, uh, the the air pressure changes on this side and there won't be any corresponding change on this side if you keep your mouth closed and there is chance that the ear drum may burst or damage okay so uh, it is advised when you watch fireworks or very you know big sounds like that don't keep your mouth closed it doesn't mean that you have to keep your mouth open but you have to just keep it a little bit uh, open um, you don't uh, close it tightly okay so in order to adjust the pressure on both sides so just keep that in mind so tympanum okay so eustachian tube you understood what is the importance of eustachian tube in order to maintain the air pressure on both sides of the uh, tympanum or the ear drum now comes the internal ear or the inner ear it is also called labyrinth the inner ear is called labyrinth and the inner ear consists of an outer bony case called bony labyrinth and you can see here see this is the outer bony labyrinth what you see here is made up of bone and it is called the bony labyrinth and here you can see there is a space inside and the actual uh, membranous labyrinth is inside the bony labyrinth with the same shape okay uh, coiled tubes so the covering the bony covering case of the membranous labyrinth this is a membranous labyrinth this blue one and that is the bony case around it and this is the bony labyrinth and it is filled with inside there is a fluid that is called perilymph so inside the whatever we see is the bony labyrinth inside there is a space and inside that there is another coiled structure that is formed of membrane and it is called membranous labyrinth so bony labyrinth is filled with a fluid called perilymph so you know what is perilymph okay this is the bony labyrinth this is the bony labyrinth what do you see here and inside there is perilymph now membranous labyrinth inside the bony labyrinth there is a membranous structure called membranous labyrinth both having the same shape okay so because the membranous labyrinth is closely enclosed inside the bony labyrinth within a space you got it so this is a membranous labyrinth and this membranous labyrinth is formed of three structures namely three semicircular circular canals semicircular canals three in number each one is perpendicular to the other two so that is the way they are arranged then a vestibule this portion a stalk like portion that connects the semicircular canal with the cochlea okay and this portion is the vestibule 
then you can see another snail shell shaped structure a coil structure and that is what is called the cochlea okay and this membranous labyrinth is filled with the fluid inside and that is called endolymph the membranous labyrinth is filled with a fluid called endolymph the semicircular canals and vestibule contain receptors of balance and helps for balancing see here the semicircular canals and the vestibule contains receptors for balance and so these two are concerned with balancing okay and these two together the vestibule and the semicircular canal together called vestibular apparatus vestibular apparatus and now this cochlea or okay the snail shell shaped structure contains inside uh, the receptors for hearing and, and this is the hearing organ so the cochlea is the hearing organ the cochlea is a snail shell shaped tubular structure that contains auditory receptors and helps for hearing so you know what is uh, semicircular canals you know what are vestib what is vestibule and what is the function of semicircular canal and vestibule and you know what is cochlea and what is the function of cochlea okay now there are certain nerves sensory nerves that goes from this inner ear to the brain one is vestibular nerve that carries impulse from the vestibular apparatus to the cerebellum you know cerebellum is a part of the brain that controls balance and now we have learned that the ear also has a role in balancing so there are nerves that goes from the vestibular apparatus to the cerebellum and that nerve is called vestibular nerve okay so the nerves that carry the impulse of balance from the semicircular canal and vestibule to the cerebellum they are the vestibular nerves and the nerve that carries the auditory impulse the impulse for hearing okay from the cochlea to the brain the auditory part of the brain and they are called auditory nerves or cochlear nerve so both together forms the cochlear auditory nerve okay uh, I'm sorry the cochlear vestibular nerve so you know what is vestibular nerve you can it can be asked this, this diagram can be asked in the exam to label okay so this is vestibular nerve this is auditory nerve this is cochlea and these are the semicircular canals and this is what is called the vestibule and here the vestibule you can see here the two openings okay in this uh, in the picture here uh, they are the oval window this is an oval shape and this is round shape this is round window and this is oval window actually this middle ear communicates with the inner ear through two windows two openings and these openings are covered by a membrane structure membrane and the, here it looks like it is an this cover this opening is oval shape and this membrane that covers it also oval shape so it is oval window and this is circular opening and it is covered by a circular membrane so it is uh, or a round membrane it is called round window so oval window is an oval shaped membrane that covers the opening from middle ear to the inner ear it receives the vibrations of the stapes which is attached to it see you know the ear ossicles the ear ossicles the last one is stapes it is attached to the oval window so any movement of this stapes can move this oval window we will learn it later then round window it is a circular membrane that covers another opening into the inner ear there are two openings okay and this this is covered by round window it helps in the movement of cochlear fluid okay actually when you learn you can understand that um, this uh, when the step is moves this oval window is pressed towards the inside and the fluid moves inside and then since it is coiled the fluid comes back and pushes on this so the round window moves outwards okay so because of this round window only there occurs the movement of the fluid and that stimulates the uh, auditory receptors inside that you will learn later so you know what is oval window and round window okay so 
you have learned that the race the year consists of external year middle year and inner year the external year has yellow auditory canal and tympanum then you have seen the middle year contains the ear ossicles three tiny bones malleus incus and stapes and you have seen their comparison the size and eustachian tube you know how important is eustachian tube uh, to uh, maintain the balance on both side of the eardrum or the tympanum then you have seen the inner ear it is also called labyrinth and the labyrinth has a bony case it is called bony labyrinth inside the bony case there is the perilymph and in most in the inside the perilymph there is a membranous structure called membranous labyrinth and membranous labyrinth has three structured parts three semicircular canals and a middle vestibule and a snail shell shaped structure called cochlea the first semicircular canal and vestibule forms the vestibular apparatus and it helps in balancing and nerves that pass from there it is a vestibular nerve then the cochlea it is a snail shell shaped structure and it contains receptors for uh, audition or hearing and so it is called uh, it, uh, the auditory part okay the main part of hearing is cochlea then vestibular nerve then cochlear nerve nerve from the cochlea that goes to the brain is auditory nerve the nerves from the vestibular apparatus that carries impulse for balancing to the cerebellum is the vestibular nerve okay that's all so read your textbook okay uh, on, um, practice the drawing this uh, diagram is very important that's it you all have a uh, great day okay thank you